Hey YouTube, back in the shop here with a little stainless steel exhaust project. It's out of a buddy's uh, race car. Don't ask what kind or what division or whatever, I have no idea. It's, uh, it is stainless and we're going to be welding it with Hobart ER70S6 C25 gas. And the problems with welding stainless with just normal steel filler wire is that you'll get, you'll get some cracks, you can get cracks, it, it reduces the strength of the welds and uh, <clears throat> obviously you lose your uh, corrosion resistance so he's fully aware of all that and as you can see by the the road rash on the, the exhaust here, he doesn't really care this didn't fall off or anything but um, he's trying to refit with some new parts I think he wrecked the car too so anyway we're gonna tack this up. You can see you put nice little lines on there for me. I don't know if he thinks I'm stupid or what, but nah, probably not. So he put lines on there for me to get the right direction. We're gonna tack it up. Uh, I beveled this side just a little bit, and that's not even needed. This stuff is really thin. I'll, I'll mic it for you. And we'll burn it and see what it looks like. Um, another issue that these guys usually worry about is <clears throat> penetration through the inside. They want it real smooth. It's usually mandrel bent, tubing, and chased, most likely chased, so there's, it's free of obstructions. It's the flow. They get more flow out of it because they're looking for every ounce of horsepower they can get. But he didn't care about penetration either, so I, I'm not worried about it if he's not. So technically, we should be welding this with a, uh, a material close to or a little higher grade than what the base material is. If I'm guessing, this is probably 304 um, stainless, so we would probably weld it with a 308 or a 309. If we were doing steel to stainless steel, we'd want like a 309, 310, or 312 grade filler metal. And you can weld steel to stainless and be fine. It's not, it's not as big of a deal as some people make it out to be. <clears throat> so we're going to be welding today on the mighty ESOB Rebel 215IC. And let's see if we can get some settings. Oh, I'm bumping you around too bad here. So today we're going to MIG. I'm already set up on MIG. And yeah, we want MIG gun. I remember how to use this thing. And it's kind of telling us, okay, we're in the range of 12 gauge. We're in the range of 14 gauge. I'm guessing this is about 16 gauge. So I'm gonna weld a little high. We'll weld 180 amps and see what happens. You can see my helper today is uh, third hand here. <clears throat> Just some scrap sitting around. Turned it into a welder's helper or a third hand, whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's get her tacked up. So the problem I've been noticing with the last time I worked on this mass of his is the bent tubing doesn't always line up perfectly. So as it's going through its different uh, dimensions, geometry here, it's almost like uh, you get different diameters as it's going along. I don't know if that's from the angles or just the way they they manufacture this stuff. but. Got a little bit of an edge here. Don't know if I like that. Let's see. Oops.
that some of this is going to be downhill. When you're welding real thin stuff going downhill, you're getting pretty much full penetration anyway. Uh, good luck trying to go uphill. I know the structural guys out there pulling their hair out going, no, don't do it. But welding downhill on real thin stuff is not a problem. Third hand's just getting in the way now. See that guys, I burn a hole. <clears throat> Couple tacks fill it in, you're good to go. <clears throat> now like I was saying earlier about the penetration on the inside. Oop, where are you? You can't see it. But I can see penetration pretty much all the way around inside of there. So it's not going to come off. It could crack years down the road. By then he'll probably have wrecked the car 14 times. So I think we're okay. That was our little project for the day. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment.